thank you again, conference. Uh, Apologise for having to you know, be back to back, but such is the uh, scheduling. Uh, conference, uh, Transforming Your Care, uh, a document that reads wonderfully, but could, if you really, really wanted to be a bit cynical about it, be quite a sinister attempt to fundamentally <coughs> change the character of our health and social care service. Uh, I am not one who ignores what ministers say. I, I make a point of being in the chamber for statements. Uh, I make it my duty on your behalf to carefully consider the questions I put to ministers and to listen attentively to what they say in response. And for six months conference, I have been asking the Minister for Health and Social Services in this jurisdiction to simply tell me that transforming your care is not a charter for the privatisation of the National Health Service in the north of Ireland through the back of the road. And for six months, he has steadfastly refused to do so. Conference, we're social democrats. It is the contract that binds us together. We believe that the NHS is one of the <coughs> finest productions of the British state, and we proudly made it ours in this jurisdiction. It is now an Irish NHS, with its own values, with its own purpose. It is a model that is admired across these islands and Europe because it is an integrated health and social care system. And it must not be undermined. It must not be sold off. When I read about the possibility of shifting left, it's ironic that it's called shifting left, uh, and bringing more services into the community, I say, here, here. But when I hear that this is so as there can be more private sector investment and involvement, so as we can mortgage off health centres to companies who will run them as PFIs, forget it. If you want that type of politics, you'll not get the SDLP's support for it. Transforming your care must actually be about the patient, but it's not. It's about the buildings. It is about trying to plug a hole in the budget. It is about trying to say that because we need 80 million to make the changes necessary, we are going to have to get the private sector to give us 80 million so as those changes are possible. That is not the way to do health and social care. There are a group of people, conference, who I think we should pay tribute to this morning. They are those who, on a daily basis, go out and represent people who work in our health and social care system. They have fought and continue to fight hard for a model of health care for the public, owned by the public, and in the interests of everyone in the public. They deserve our support, not just as a fellow Labour Party, they, they deserve our support because on this occasion they are right. In the coming year, I lay one challenge at the door of this minister. If he is serious about radical reform to the NHS, well let him bring it to the House by legislation. Let him bring a bill that spells out exactly what the boundaries of his privatisation are going to be and let us all have an equal say as legislators. But if, as I suspect he will, he tries stealth privatisation of our NHS, I can guarantee you my opposition, but I must appeal to you all, those of you who are in local government, those of you who work in the health service, those of you who are foot soldiers of this party with an interest in the health service, to oppose it tooth and nail. We must defend what we love. And I've never met anyone in this jurisdiction who doesn't love the principles and values of the health service. I command the motion. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, Conference. Uh, I want to speak in support uh, of Motion 52. 
Connell has articulated very well our uh, opposition to increased privatisation uh, within uh, the healthcare sector. Uh, the call for an All-Ireland commissioning plan for specialist medical services uh, is valid, logical and cost effective and will, for example, protect valued services like paediatric congenital cardiac services uh, in the Royal Victoria Hospital, which are currently under threat and which will be protected if we can get networking and cooperation <coughs> Uh, between uh, Belfast and Our Lady's Hospital in Crumlin. Also, uh, the call for greater cooperation in all, health, all aspects of health and social care in border regions is logical. Uh, and this will also include the sentiment of the motion proposed by OMA, Motion 54, which is to enable ambulance services to transfer acutely ill patients to the nearest acute hospital, regardless of whether that acutely ill patient resides north or south of the border. We have a brand new fabulous hospital facility in Enniskillen, the Southwest Acute Hospital. That hospital needs patients from across the border to make it increasingly sustainable. Chair, where I'm disappointed with uh, the, the thrust of this motion is the fact that if 52 passes, 53 will fall. This is a motion from the OMA branch which calls for the adequate uh, resourcing of transforming your care, which as Connell has said, proposes a shift left from secondary and tertiary care to primary and community care. Chair, the, the former chairman of the British Medical Association, Brian Patterson, in addressing GPs recently, called this document not transforming your care, but transferring your care. Because care in the community and primary care is less expensive. This is essentially a cost-cutting exercise. And the supplementary document, uh, trans Transforming Your Care Vision to Action, is currently out, to, out for consultation. Uh, with the closing date being mid-January 2013. Uh, I'm sure the party will be responding formally. I, will urge, I urge you all individually uh, to respond to that consultation document. GPs are increasingly being asked to identify alternative care pathways, uh, which essentially means that you don't send your patient to hospital, you treat them in community. For example, elderly patients residing in nursing homes requiring intravenous antibiotics, this service can now be delivered by the rapid response nursing team. That service is not adequately resourced. Just yesterday I referred a patient, the nurse said to me, Dr. Dehan, I can only offer you a once daily antibiotic regime because there's only one nurse on duty over the weekend. So therefore choose an antibiotic that is administered once, day, once daily and not three times daily. Let's make sure that these proposals are adequately resourced. Recently we have proposals to uh, reduce acute psychiatric services in OMA, uh, Tyrone and Fermanagh Hospital. Already our acute psychiatric beds have been reduced and yet the community facilities which support uh, acutely mental ill patients have not been delivered. Respite facilities, for example, in Ferron Drive, there's a waiting list of three to four weeks for ill patients to be admitted there. We need to have increased investment uh, in primary and community care before we can accept the recommendations of transforming your care. So I urge you to rec uh, uh, remember these points and to respond appropriately to the consultation document. However, broadly, I support motion 52. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Joe. Is there any other speaker that wants to speak in this health section, motion 52? If not, we will proceed to a vote. Those in favour of motion 52. Thank you. Those against? The motion is passed. That means motion 53 and 54 fall. We're now on to 55, Parliamentary Assembly Group. Colin McDevitt, are you proposing, Colin? Colin Colin needs to be back, Colin, thanks. Yeah.
Thanks, Chair. Um, I'm a bit of a Johnny come lately to this issue, but it's fair to say that the SDLP uh, is not. Um, through the leadership of Conor McDevitt and many other people in this party, I think we secured uh, this inquiry and the work that I'm doing on the committee is to try and ensure that we secure the best possible inquiry uh, that we can get. Uh, this inquiry needs not only to be about the needs of victims, and that has to be central, but it also needs to be about uh, ensuring that we do not create dangerous precedents uh, for, for any future inquiries in Northern Ireland. We need to ensure that the independence of this inquiry and that the independence of any future inquiries is secure. Uh, I think we've done, uh, we've gone some way to do that uh, through the work of many of the the, 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 the victims. suffered institutional uh, abuse have been waiting a long, long time to have their issues done. Conference, can I, uh, can I uh, pay tribute to Colin? We knew, we knew he was a fine mayor of the Maiden City. He turned out to be quite a legislator too, and um, I know he'll be thinking about those amendments being brought to the floor directly, given that we were unsuccessful at committee. And I want to pay tribute to it is in committee that if Colin inherited it from me, I actually inherited it from her. And, uh, it would be important this morning that we recognise Connell's role. Uh, I think it is fair that uh, we must also recognise Alex's role. There was a lot of behind the scenes negotiation on executive level in the run up to the announcement of an inquiry. Uh, Alex, as always, was diligent, compassionate and just in his approach. And can I thank personally Mark Durkin for supporting me when I arrived as the rookie MLA into a very experienced team with an issue that was sometimes controversial and allowing me the space to be able to continue to campaign without any restrictions for this group of people. Um, it is a great place uh, to be. Uh, it is fantastic to think that we, this party, will deliver uh, a proper historical inquiry public independent uh, for the people whose childhoods were denied them in institutional care in this jurisdiction. Uh, but that is only half the job and I'm seeing Paddy Corrigan down the back of the hall there from Amnesty. He and I know that this is only half the work for there are still hundreds if not thousands of victims of clerical abuse, people who were abused in, their, in our community for whom this inquiry will not give truth or justice, but who equally deserve, are entitled to and must receive truth or justice. Can I, conference, reiterate my call to the First and Deputy First Minister and the Taoiseach to urgently put on the agenda of the North-South Ministerial Council the need to coordinate on an all-island basis future inquiries into clerical abuse. And can, on your behalf, I make this commitment to the survivors of community abuse. This party will stand with you like we stood by the survivors of institutional abuse. This party will continue to demand that the executive and the Irish government face up to, your to their responsibilities to you. And we will also use every vehicle available to us through the Northern Ireland Assembly at a regional level to ensure that in this jurisdiction, in this era of peace, peace is for everyone. And in this era of truth, truth comes to everyone. And that the 
misdeeds of paramilitaries deserve exploration and deserve to be unearthed. But so do the misdeeds of other people who abused power in this place in the past 40 years. I thank you, Conference, for allowing us to get this far. I ask you to stand in solidarity with survivors. They need you. Thank you very much. Thank you.